Okay, so Avengers Endgame is now finally out. We're going to be talking about the ending. So this is a massive spoiler warning for you guys. So if you haven't watched it, click off right now. You will utterly love the film much more if you haven't been spoiled because there's tons of stuff that you would not expect. So click off right now if you haven't watched the film. But if you watch the film, thank you for clicking on. And this is going to be my Avengers Endgame ending explain video. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you are new so you don't miss any Marvel videos later this year. Alright, so as we head towards the end of the film, obviously we have the wrap up of a load of different stories and just first off, I love this film. I think this is my favourite MCU film. I was truly, truly emotionally moved. We'll talk about some of my reactions to the ending in specifics, but I cried like five times and I never cry at Marvel films. I don't think I have the same emotional investment that a lot of people do, like with Tony actually getting stabbed in Infinity War, I was like, uh, yeah, I didn't really cry or anything, I know lots of people did, with Spider-Man, you know, disintegrating at the end, I felt sorry for him, but I wasn't tearing up or anything, so I haven't had this impact before, but this film really hit me, and I absolutely loved it. Okay, so let's go on to the end of the film, so the Avengers are s set up in, like, a temporary space by the lake after the headquarters got destroyed by Thanos and his army, and so... We get this scene, and this scene is between Captain America, the Winter Soldier, and Falcon, aka Bucky, Steve, and Sam, and so we get this scene, Cap's about to go back in the past, he's about to time travel to put all the Infinity Stones back, that was explained prior by the Sorceress Supreme, that being played by Tilda Swinton, so we get this scene, and it, this is a mirror completely to the first Avenger. They say the same line, but it's just reversed with Bucky and Steve. So it's the, don't do anything stupid until I get back. That was truly, truly amazing. I love that moment. That was just great for me because I love Captain America, the first Avenger. That was actually my first MCU film I saw in the cinema. I was only like, maybe nine? When did it come out? 2009, something like that? So, yeah, wow. I really love that moment, but anyway, so Captain America goes back in time, they have this five second time gap, and he's supposed to return. He doesn't return after five seconds, he doesn't reappear, but a few seconds after that, at the lake, we see an old, but happy Steve Rogers. Bucky is unfazed by what he is seeing right now, he says to Falcon, go ahead. I have this feeling that... Bucky was actually told everything that was going to happen. I think that he definitely talked to him. I'm going to go back. I'm going to be with, spoiler, we'll talk about her in a sec. I'm going to live this life. Just to warn you, I'm not going to come back after five seconds. So how did Steve go back and not affect the future? That's something that I've heard some people asking. And it's actually relatively simple in terms of how they explain time travel in this film because obviously it's quite different but it's more realistic compared to say Back to the Future as they reference in the film so going back and making changes doesn't affect everyone's present the present we're seeing right now with Falcon and Winter Soldier that won't be affected because with Steve going back in time with him putting back those gems he could necessarily return to our time unaffected but with him going back in time and him actually staying there, he creates a new timeline. It's new events, but it doesn't affect the present that we're seeing right now, and that is due to it being a completely different timeline. So imagine the normal timeline straight, basically the one Steve's going to that he's created is veering off from it and it's split into two timelines. So there's also another timeline where Loki actually escaped, so there's various ones now in the MCU. So we see Steve, he's supposedly lived his ideal life, you see that he got married, there was a ring, and who was he married to? That being Peggy Carter. So Peggy died of natural causes a few films back, but without living with Steve throughout their, obviously, adulthood, and then into their later years. So when we saw Peggy earlier in the film, that's a massive spoiler, so when he goes back in time, he sees a 
Peggy that's a little bit older, still working for S.H.I.E.L.D. at the time, and he realises this could be his reality. And so I think the idea stuck in his mind throughout the end of the film. You know, with him about to die, I genuinely thought he was going to die by the hands of Thanos. He was be being beaten to a pulp, and it was at that moment, I think, it was probably relaying through his head, if I survive, we have the ability to time travel, to create a new timeline, to have this other version of my life, what would I do? And he successfully lived that life. So Steve passes on the Captain America mantle to Falcon. Perhaps, I think, like I mentioned earlier, Steve definitely told Bucky of everything that he was going to do before because he was unfazed and it looked like he knew what was going on. And this leads into it's been a long, long time to actually play the classic 1945 song from Kitty Kalen. It's an all-time classic. It's just so peaceful and romantic. It's a beautiful song. So it begins to play with a tracking shot showcasing the surroundings. We see some older looking cars, some more vintage looking cars. So we're in our minds at that point sort of clicking on and we are left wondering. But with the classic post-war 1945 classic actually playing in the background just simmering and sort of building up we create that connection to captain america and the time he is from because that is when he left he was in the ice for 70 years and then he comes to the present and all of that is lost and so it's a sort of massive loop back to his first appearance in the mcu and so we pan in through the garden through the front garden to a slow dancing Steve Rogers and Peggy Carter. The perfect end. It is beautiful, touching and full of hope. Then we cut to black as it's been a long, long time continues to play. I was left in tears. That was such a brilliant end to the film. It truly was hopeful. It was just a wonderful way to actually loop back all the way back to the start to when we first met Steve and Peggy and it was essentially what he'd always wanted he wanted that last dance as at the end of the first Avenger when he's going down they have that date all set and he asks for a rain check and he says I don't know how to dance and so he finally learned how to dance and that's how they ended his arc in the MCU and that was how he started it's just beautiful so what do you think did you really like the film as much as i did i thought it's definitely the best mcu film one of the best comic book films i think that might take my top five spot because i have a really strong affliction for the dark knight trilogy and wonder woman and i will have to watch it again to see maybe if that goes over wonder woman or not we'll have to wait and see but amazing film and a beautiful ending that really really moved me and so thank you guys so much for watching please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any marvel videos later this year so i'll see you guys later goodbye